So I'm going to be having a chat about how um, some of the ideas can get pulled together for textual conversations module Tempest and Hagseed. A lot of things going on in this module. I know I'm going to isolate a couple of the key ones and hopefully that will just help you formulate your ideas and um, make those connections that can form really good paragraphs. Um, they can answer different questions that you may get. So obviously to begin with you want to make sure that you're very comfortable with the terms from the rubric. I love the terms from the rubric. They're, they're so great to put into sentences. So words like reframes, reimagines, mirrors, dissonant, resonant, um, you know, make sure you're really grounded in a lot of those words so that you can bring those in firstly within your actual writing and secondly that's where your questions are going to come from. So you need to be really comfortable at using those key terms, context, value, I'll be trying to throw some of those around today but yeah you've got to be really comfortable with how those terms actually fit into your ideas and your writing. So to start with uh, we're just going to be talking about the idea of darkness. So darkness, art, magic, theatre and um, in particular the idea of transformation. So this is definitely something you guys would have looked at in class and the way I really like to start off um, this particular discussion and maybe the way you want to start off your essay is to look at the central characters. So we've got Prospero and Felix and, you know, we have a lot of things that can kind of get pulled together through looking at their characters. So to keep it really simple, we're just going to look at how their characters are when they start off. Okay, so we've got Prospero who's like angry and vengeful and we see that anger and that vengeance manifest itself in the opening storm which obviously he himself has conjured. Similarly when we look at Felix um, there will the idea of vengeance definitely does come in but right from the outset especially when we go straight into the idea of performance he's actually dealing with grief so grief is the is that primal like or that inner turmoil that he is experiencing in parallel with Prospero obviously there's slight differences but you know it's um they're very visceral human experiences and they're really heavily impacting both of these characters so what you want to do is look at how both of the composers, whether it be Shakespeare or Atwood, have represented the turmoil and the um, experiences of both of these particular characters. And then what we'll draw into later is how do those transform? So, and this is this is a great part where we can bring in all these really amazing ideas about um, not only darkness, so and, and of course this is darkness within the human experience, right? Um, and it, how is it manifested? So we're looking at how art, um, so when we're looking at Prospero, his art is his magic. And initially we see that art or that magic be used in a really um, quite a negative or like a very dark way. And to just bring in a bit of the context about this, so, you know, um, prior to the Enlightenment period, there was a lot of, you know, like, dead set truth about you know witchcraft and the dark and the arts and you know um black magic and you know there was like really strong beliefs about that so obviously people were you know hung over it like witchcraft and witch trials and you know that just went on for such a long time then we come to the enlightenment period and this is only just coming when Shakespeare's coming in so actually King James was like really into the idea of witchcraft and very much believed that to be um you know a factual real thing Whereas um, come the Enlightenment, um, we're moving towards more things like scientific rationalism and that obviously began to disprove some of these theories that were held as truths for such a long time. And so Shakespeare sort of like shows that there may be this idea that, you know, art is um, or this idea of magic is something that we're going to be giving up, like even the idea of, but he's still playing with it because it's early days in that movement. Um, so when you have a look at the way that Prospero, start, like, well, the play starts off, we're thrown into this storm, but then immediately we're shown that this is an illusion. This is something that's been completely fabricated by Prospero which is sort of brings in this idea of meta theater where we go oh like this the this um 
this storm wasn't real, you know, and, and when we're drawn, when we're drawn to the attention of the fact that this is a created phenomena and it's just an illusion or theatrical illusion, that's what we call meta theater. So you really want to make sure you have that term in there um, because that's a, and that's also kind of flows through between both of the texts. Um, so when we have a look at that opening, you know, like the idea of the dark art, it's materializing his anger and his desire for vengeance against his brother. Um, in terms of the techniques you can use, so you've got like the tempestuous noise, you've got the howling, like great prophetic fallacy going on there where um, the, the storm um, in, in represents a particular emotion or it's given those living characteristics to really show you the visceral anger and vengeance that Prospero is experiencing and that is manifesting through the storm. Um, we've got Miranda saying, by your art, my dearest father, you've put the wild waters in this roar. So it's really drawing attention to that meta theatrical illusion of the storm. It's just, it's constructed and um, whilst also representing Prospero's um, state of darkness. And basically Prospero must overcome his darker impulses throughout the course of the play. And that is what Shakespeare is going to be drawing our attention towards. Very much a product of humanism, Renaissance humanism humanism where um and humanism is all about the human experience and human the human condition um which obviously we all relate to um you know but there's this idea that you know prospero can't live on like this this isn't sustainable and something needs to change but we've got to see what he's like before before we can talk about where he comes to after and that's something that you might want to talk about later on so then we go from there into Hagseed, and um in Hagseed, we're looking at the idea that, you know, Prospero's anger and desire for vengeance has been reimagined into Felix's grief for the loss of his daughter, right? So he uses his art and performance as a vehicle to keep her alive and to like process his own emotions or at least try to. So that's obviously very difficult. So um, again, like very like keep using kind of visceral, visceral um, like emotional um, turmoil and reactions that are going on here. So, you know, he says, what to do with such a sorrow? It was like an enormous black cloud boiling over the horizon. No, it was like a blizzard. So we've got that motif of the storm coming in. We've got this idea of that, um, that weather um, or the storm manifest being a manifestation of his grief and his turmoil and potentially even his mental illness which is something that Margaret Atwood touches on very like in, in con you know that's something obviously quite a modern um, a much more modern or postmodern concept or value um, so yeah that's what we've got here so in continuing theatrical motive from the storm in the tempest Atwood adapts the utilization of this chaotic opening to a Canadian context using the atmospheric upheaval of a blizzard Similar to Ter Prospero, it manifests his dark desires and reflects his inner, inner turmoil. So you can see those connections there. So there's this resonance between the two characters and the fact that they, um, you know, suffer through either the that turmoil of either vengeance or grief. And the way that it is represented is um, there's another connection there that's mirrored through the motif of the storm. However, we can see differences in the actual context. So Prospero's got this idea there's that idea of um you know magic being an art being a representation of like those previous values um there but prior to the enlightenment um period and then for um for Atwood you've got like this idea of you know it being um and so this is where it becomes a little bit satirical so again it's quite meta theatrical the very first thing we see is kind of this really absurd image of like a little sailboat tossing and you've got like these um like stock images of this you know a storm being put in so there's this idea of like how technology is what has also transformed um, you know, art and performance. And um, oh, what's that thing I was reading here? That was also another really cool thing about how um, oh, I might have to add this one later. Yeah. But look, basically what you're looking at, and I love this quote from, from Nina Cook. Sorry, not Nina Cool, Nina Cook. Um, For both Prospero and Felix, theatre allows a magical transcendence from both their own painful losses and their moral failings. Okay, so I think this is a really good way to kind of set up the initial ideas which pull so many things together about art, theatre, transformation, magic, um, 
you know, human experience and the broader in a way, like all the more things you can kind of pull into this idea of where the characters first start off, the better you're going to be at being able to adapt this to lots and lots of different questions. Um, obviously, you never memorize a topic sentence and you need to adapt, you know, like completely rewrite a topic sentence and, um, you know, the, the paragraph the whole way through. But, you know, that this is often a really good way to get started because it is simple in the sense that it's like, oh, where do these characters start off? But then how how can we pull in these more complex ideas to represent um, these particular characters, their turmoil, and then obviously how um, their characters change and progress and transform over the course of their text?